think I am going to uh, just take care of sanding, priming, and painting this dashboard now while I have it out. It's not going to take that much extra time, I don't think. So I got to get these uh, these little retaining clips off for the instrument cluster screws. Whoa! It's one. See if we can get these off. Well, that was refreshing. There's a metal frame inside this rubber. Be nice if there was some way I could reuse that. This is where the control for the tilt steering goes through. And if you're wondering why I'm bothering taking this off, well, for two reasons. Uh, first off, I noticed it was loose and it was just kind of jiggling around. So I was gonna have to tighten it anyways. But I'm gonna completely strip this, prime it and paint it. And if I don't get this little area right underneath here, I know what's gonna happen. Uh, it's gonna tend to wanna rust if this loosens up. It'll rub it and rust it. And I don't know, so maybe I'm just out of my gourd, but I'm doing it anyways. I say that I'm gonna sand and prime and paint this, but actually, I've got my son, the auto body specialist. I think maybe this is the perfect job for him. Edges are now chipped. Yeah, well, that one was well used. But look, you already got like a third done, so. Actually, more than a third done because this area doesn't have to do. I give you the other thing if you want. I'm uh -huh. just worried about it scratching too much. The wire cup. Yeah, no. Nah. That wire cup one that I have, it's a, like a really aggressive one. It's got really stiff bristles on it, so it'll make a lot of scratches. Do you have newer one of these? Yes, I do. Okay, well, I, I need it for this edge. Okay. So you can just use the, use these shop rags. Yeah. You know, wet it a little bit with this stuff. This is Jasco Prep and Primer for metal, bare metal. Cleans the metal in preparation for painting. You can use that like a tack. Can you see them? Can they see me? Or I see the thing? Everybody can see you. I hear, I hear loads of people cheering right now. Woo! Go, Mark, go! Uh, I think the cap's on there. The, the st see the thing stuck to it? Is there a hole in it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't see the hole. Oh, a little thing sticks on there. And doesn't work. Sandable primer first, right? Yes. That's cool, we don't have to shake them.
Can I test it real quick? Yeah, as long as we get this done before um, next January. Ah. Uh, it's sandable primer. I know, but it's coming out heavy. Well, don't freak out. You can just uh, sand that away. Want me to fully coat it? Sure. That way between this and the other primer you want to put on there, it'll be two full coats of primer. Can't imagine that that's going to be bad to have two coats of primer on there, is it? No. All right, so we just, uh, we ended up waiting for that sandable primer to dry. Then we just used the Scotch-Brite pad to smooth it out. How'd that work? Okay. And then we tacked it again and uh, now he's getting ready to put regular primer over the top of that. Foaming. Mark's, uh, he's gonna paint the entire backhoe for us while we're at it. That's looking good. It's not coming off. It's not coming out anymore. Really? Probably just clogged. All right, so our primer was trash because it was ancient. So we're just gonna paint over the uh, sandable primer with this uh, black enamel paint that I have. This is engine enamel, but it's the only black paint I have. Paint's so expensive these days, I figured I might as well use it. Breaking out all the antique paint. <laughs> all right, that's like four coats of engine enamel on there. That should give it some protection. So what I decided to do with this was uh, after I cut off all of the uh, loose cracked bits of rubber, um, touching this, it was it was just all the black was coming off on my fingers. You know that uh, that syndrome you get like with old steering wheels and that, where every time you touch it, your fingers just turn black. So that kind of deterioration, I figured I'm going to have to keep dealing with if I don't do something about it. So what I did was I scrubbed this really well and cleaned it with hot water. And then I went with the uh, uh, emery pad and I scrubbed it down and wiped it clean. And then I sprayed it with this mess that's on here now. It doesn't look that great, but... I'm hoping it's going to work out because what I ended up using is this Rust-Oleum leak seal stuff. This is like almost identical to that flex seal stuff that you see on the infomercials. So this is a waterproof coating that is very flexible. So I'm hoping that it's going to uh, work well for this application. It doesn't look as nice as I might have liked, but you know, if I had sprayed this with paint, I think because of the instability of the underlying rubber, that the paint would either not adhere or uh, it would just uh, end up cracking and flaking off as it expanded and contracted whereas this stuff should flex and move with the rubber as it heats up and cools off in the sun. You know, when I first uh, sprayed this coating on I didn't really like the way it looked this mottled finish um, but now that it's fully cured I actually am uh, pretty satisfied with the way it looks and I think it's going to hold up well to the weather if this flex seal stuff is true to its name so now uh, I want to try and fill in this gap in here that you know on the original on the original piece there was that that rubber was molded and it came up like that and had a slit in the middle so that the um, the uh, tilt steering tube could move up and down uh, I'm not going to be able to recreate that um, perfectly because well Quite frankly, that would mean I would have to have some sort of a, a way to make a mold and cast the new rubber part. So instead, I've got this rubber mat material, got a roll of it. Um, who knows where I got this from? But I uh, obviously saved it thinking that, well, maybe one of these days I'll have a project where this will come in handy. And this might be just the perfect material for this job so I figure what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, cut a slice of this to sandwich between this piece and the dashboard and then just have a slice right down the middle it won't be perfect you know but it'll be better than 
just having it completely wide open, or at least I'm hoping. Like I said, I don't know where I got this material from, but anybody who's wondering what it is, uh, it's actually on the inside, it's stenciled uh, with all of this stuff here. Cured 2008, uh, industrial compound. I have a feeling that what this is is rubber roofing material. I think this is what they use for doing um, flat roofs now. So the first thing I did was I just roughly laid it out, keeping in mind that there's a bend to it, so I need this to be a little bit longer. And uh, so I'll just start by cutting it over size and length. Making the holes in this thick rubber uh, might be difficult normally, but I found that if I use my gasket cutting set, the cutters are sharp enough, it's just very hard to get them through. So actually all I did was I uh, put them on my arbor press. I was able to slice right through. I am using an oversized hole size just so I have a little leeway in case I'm not perfect with my alignment. You can hear that little cutting sound as it cuts through the rubber. Looks like I was way off with that one. Well, I think it's going to be hidden. So you get the gist of what I'm going for here. Now I just need to cut a slit down the middle here. Well, when I was working on this, I was going by memory and I thought the U-shape was on the top and it's on the bottom. So when I put this piece on, now I've got this gap here, but I'm noticing that the dashboard is so, the cutout for the dash is so close. I think that the dash is gonna sit right over this top. So I don't think it's gonna make much of a difference. So this wasn't painted originally. So I don't know if this had some sort of a finish anti-corrosive finish on it, it must have, but I think over the years it just kind of went away, so I don't know. Maybe I'll spray that with some clear lacquer. And I think just for giggles I'm going to try this uh, hammered uh, silver finish that I had, some left over. I actually kind of like the way this hammered silver finish came out. Hammered gray, whatever it is. All right, so now I'm ready to put this back in. There are uh, four wires I need to connect up, and there are four connections on the back of the new instrument cluster. This one is the easiest one. It's clearly marked it's a ground, and that wire in almost all applications is gonna be this solid black wire. This device right here is called a voltage stabilizer. And what this does is this acts as a regulator. It takes the raw 12 volts coming from the generator in at this point, and it outputs 12 volts here that is regulated at 12 volts to feed through these green wires the temperature and fuel gauge. So you'll notice that it comes over to here, and, and as the jumper wire comes over to here. So what they do is they're sending 12 volts to one side of the gauge, each one of the gauges. And then the other side of the gauge goes to the switches, whether it be the fuel sending unit switch or the temperature uh, switch. And those switches are actually resistors that change resistance as the fuel level goes up and down and the temperature goes up and down. So in effect, there's always 12 volts on one side of this gauge 
And what they're doing is they're basically regulating, well, regulating is not a good, good term, but they're basically playing with how far above ground potential the other end of this gauge is. And so when this is completely grounded out, that would be full scale deflection. I was able to find several versions of the wiring diagram for this that showed the wire colors. Unfortunately, every single one of those that I could find was a uh, photocopy or a, a scan from a manual. And in almost every single one of those situations, if you try to blow it up large enough to see what the wiring uh, colors were, you, it would uh, be so um, blurry you couldn't see it. So then there was also this wiring diagram. This is a common one that you could find online. This is actually a pretty good diagram. Problem with this one is does the problem with this one is that it doesn't give you the colors of the wires. But we can deduce by looking at this, and then also I found this and this is actually kind of nice somebody actually laid out took a photograph of an actual instrument cluster numbered the connections and then gave a little write-up of what each one does so with that information the only mystery i really have is this orange wire and none of the diagrams or write-ups that i was able to find is, a, is an orange wire described as being used for any of these. But I'll just be able to do process of elimination. I think this is gonna end up being either the fuel gauge or the, uh, the uh, temperature gauge. So my solid black wire I know is gonna go here. The coolant gauge is on the side with the voltage stabilizer, which is actually opposite of the original uh, instrument cluster, but that doesn't change anything. It's just where they decided to physically mount it. Electrically, it's in the same place in the circuit. So this solid white wire appears to be the, the 12 volt feed to that voltage stabilizer. And then we have this wire here, which appears to be either a yellow wire with a blue stripe or a blue wire with a yellow stripe. I got a feeling maybe that's gonna be a, something else. Yeah, okay, so that's most likely that's a green wire with a blue stripe that has faded to this almost yellow color. So that's gonna be the temperature gauge sender. This, so this goes to the temperature gauge sending unit. So then this orange one, through process of elimination, must be my fuel gauge sending unit, which that's an easy one to see because my fuel gauge sending unit is right underneath the cowling here. So I can just look at that and see if it's an orange wire. Well, the holes that they made for the uh, light sockets to insert into on the back of the gen and oil pressure warning light spots are a little bit too large. So that just, you know, common issue with import parts. Either that or the plastic uh, sockets just aren't springing out enough. They've got little fingers on them that are supposed to actually act to help hold that in there. So they keep just falling out. So what I think I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to hot glue them in. Um, but I want to make sure I've got them in the right place, which I'm not positive because the wiring is so discolored, I can't quite tell which one is which. The uh, lights are both red. The lenses, that is, are both red. I wish they had made one maybe orange, like for the generator and the red, uh, red for the oil. But I noticed on the original, that was made in England, they were also red. And in the same fashion, they've just got a little silhouette of an oil can for the oil pressure and a little silhouette of a lightning bolt for the generator. So I figure if I start it right now, um, I think my generator doesn't work on this thing. So I should see one light go out. And if the one light goes out, that basically will tell me that my uh, oil pressure built up and the light that doesn't go out is probably my gen light All right, so I Definitely have those in the right location So I can glue those into place and, and I got to hook up my tack cable hopefully the new tack cable 
and the tack drive is all working. Well, I think I've finally finished installing the new instrument cluster. You know, now that I look at it more closely, uh, the quality of the finish here is not very good. Uh, there's some drips and bubbling in the paint. Um, it almost looks like this was an old original part that was refinished. Or it was not a very good casting in the first place. And maybe, just maybe even, the the company that I got this from, maybe they're getting these in from India and they're black and they're repainting them white to capture the whack jobs like myself who are just paying extra because they want this to be white. In retrospect, I could have taken the one off of my original one, I think, and reused it. Or and spruced it up with some white paint, I guess. Anywho, the uh, important thing is now it's all in. Um, I still don't have this part of the dash screwed to the fiberglass hood here and I don't have the hood fully mounted but I've got it back in position. One of the things I ended up doing was I finally solved the problem of these bulbs falling out of their socket areas on the back of the new instrument cluster. A little bit of JB Weld. Just kidding. Obviously not a good idea to permanently to use something like JB Weld to uh, mount those. I used hot glue. Um, you know, the hot glue sticks, I think that's going to give it enough um, adhesion to stay in place. And yet, if down the road I need to take those sockets out to change a bad bulb, I should be able to pry them out without destroying them. Uh, speaking of which, the uh, at one point when I was working on it, my lights stopped working. And what I determined happened was that 4 amp fuse holder down below that I had to uh, open up to check the fuse the plastic was very dry and brittle and ended up cracking so I ended up having to replace that fuse holder I just uh, cut it out and spliced in a new inline fuse holder with a more standard size AGC 4 amp fuse uh, what else I think that about covers it uh, I got the tachometer hooked up and working so um, give you a demonstration turn the key on both of my lights are lighting. Um, oh, by the way, if I turn the dash, uh, turn the headlights on, it's kind of hard to see, but both of these dash lamps are lighting. Shut that, shut that back off, and we'll start the tractor. So I'll probably end up uh, getting one of my more uh, precision tachometers and proofing this tack to see if it is in fact reading correctly. I have no reason to believe it wouldn't, but just in case. And so those of you uh, who uh, were watching closely may have noticed that this light never did go out and that is my generator light. So there is a problem with the charging system, but I kind of suspected that. So that's what I'm going to tackle next time. All right. Thanks for watching.